just heard from ODAC. Jose was actually at the ODAC um, about neratinib. So, you know, can someone at least start by explaining to our audience what the extended adjuvant trial was, um, Extident? Does someone want to take a stab at that first before Jose gives us the blow by blow of the? Uh, is anybody familiar with? Well, the this was a uh, randomized trial taking patients who had completed standard chemotherapy plus trastuzumab for her to positive breast cancer, and uh, within a year of completing uh, trastuzumab, were randomized to neratinib or placebo. And it initially included all patients. They later narrowed it down to higher risk patients. And the trial was a little complicated because it, it went through different uh, uh, sponsors, although the same CRO was involved. But nevertheless, it did, in the end, when put together and followed over a long period of time, produce a clear difference in disease-free survival, a little greater in the hormone receptor positive subgroup, but the trial as a whole was positive. No, I mean, I agree. I thought it was, I think it was 3 to 5 percent or something like that. And, and the issue with, with diarrhea it tend to happen early, but it happened in a, a great number of patients, so grade 3 diarrhea rate was, was rather high. Uh, it did attenuate over time. It was mostly within the first month or so, first couple of weeks. Uh, but that, that was, you know, one of the concerns, of course. And, um, uh, but I think uh, this tells us that there is the potential for residual disease. There is a potential for what, what I found fascinating about this trial is that uh, we've known from hormonal therapy that you can make an impact on the natural history with very late interventions, you know, five to ten years. Now we're learning that the same is true Which in other too. diseases. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just a very, it's an interesting study, and I think that, you know, people were betting, I think, before this, you know, and I think if you asked a panel like this, from what I gather, having asked panels like this, I think it was 50-50 or 3070 that it would not pass an ODAC, and it turned out it was 12-4, you know, 4. Jose, can you kind of describe that a little bit? No, I think it was based on the data. Uh, the, the FDA presented, so the big problem with the trial is what they will have mentioned, that it had different sponsors. And they also had different, um, they, they changed the primary endpoint a few times. And that's something that, but the FDA uh, came with a very good statistical analysis looking at all the variable situations and what would have happened if this, uh, you know, this condition had not been changed and so on. And the consensus was that the primary endpoint, as it was presented, was solid. Uh, this was an inc a substantial increase in, uh, in, 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 in outcome for these patients. To me, what's fascinating is the concept that you have two types of HER2-positive disease. The HER2-positive ER-positive and the HER2-positive ER-negative. And you have those patients that are HER2-positive, ER-positive, that they continue to relapse um, even after many years of having stopped therapy. And that's where these extended therapies may play a role. And there is a lot of crosstalk uh, between ER and her too, Carlos has published extensively on this uh, area. And I think it makes a lot of sense, this concept of a persistent blockade of both her too and ER. And I think that's what the extended study is showing. So it becomes an option. <coughs> it becomes an option for patients that are perceived to be at high risk. And I agree also with Devud that the diarrhea uh, is short in duration and that we have learned a lot on how to, on how to manage that with loperamide, uh, by also uh, dose interruption, et cetera. Yeah, no, I agree. Steroids, Steroids, yeah, Steroids. Yeah. Yeah. I think. So will people at Sarah Cannon use neratinib? I think and so. And for who? Our early experience um, is, has really been difficult in trying to, you know, I think now look at that data, um, except it's positive, how to integrate that with affinity um, and do we have different standards, you know, looking at our hormone receptor negative, hormone receptor positive, and are we starting to now change the way we look at our HER2 positives and have different algorithms? I do still think, you know, it's going to be expertise of the physician, clinician managing that in those patients and not having early discontinuations. Um, for a high-risk patient, I think absolutely. I think we're all trying to continue to reduce the risk of relapse. But I think there's going to be an art to getting that patient through diarrhea because these are all patients that are cured and they're back in um, their normal daily life. And diarrhea, different than the heme toxicities, you know, is a bit of a showstopper for a patient. I mean, it really is something that disrupts their life. So I think we have to really challenge ourselves to help manage that. Um, in the first couple of months that they're on it. Kim? Yeah, I mean, if it receives regulatory approval, I think I will use it. 
in the majority of my patients. I don't think we have a really good way of predicting even with the prophylaxis who's going to get the diarrhea. So just like we do across all of oncology, we say we think this drug might help you. You've finished your year of TRAS. That's always a trying moment. And I'm very impressed with the ER positive data. And I will say that I was one of those people that had you asked me two, three years ago, does this trial make sense? Is it really resonating that this is a drug that will benefit your patients facing early stage HER2 positive? I was really kind of hesitant about it. But we now have five years longer follow-up. I think the trial's been kind of raked over the coals with extensive analysis. And the data now with longer follow-up has stayed true, especially in the ER positive. And I will offer it to my patients with the caveat that there is a side effect, just like I do with everything else I do. And um, we'll try it. And we'll try to minimize the side effects. And at least I will feel obligated to offer it to the majority of my patients. Does it make sense scientifically to do this? I think it does, yeah. I tell you what, I never dismiss the data yeah. based on the fact that uh, there was plausibility, mechanistic plausibility to it. Uh, Neuratinib also inhibits EGF receptor, which in some cases can mediate escape, crosses the blood-brain barrier. I don't think, uh, since you were asking us, I'm, I'm, I've been, we've handled, we've done a lot, used neuratinib in the context of the uh, basket trials, HER2 mutations, and I've been, uh, frankly, it hasn't been a bit of a, much of a problem to right. us. We prophylax, mm -hmm. and after two cycles, there are some patients that don't even and need emotive anymore. anymore. Yep, that's my, so, been my look, experience if, also. If cancer cells adapt, I'm sure that the stem cells in the gut or whatever is being are adapting hit, too. are adapting too. Right, so now, in terms of would I use it, I'll probably use it in a minority, not in many. I would like to see hmm. what are the patients in uh, affinity that have to, are at a particular high risk of recurrence. Uh, I would be, wouldn't be surprised if those who are with, you know, a uh, high number of nodes, some that have, those that patients that have extensive uh, disease post-neoadjuvant therapy. Which are basically ER positive, Correct. triple positive patients. Those are the patients so who generally have residual In those disease. patients, I would use it. I would not use it with trastuzumab and pertuzumab because that diarrhea then would be unmanageable. Right. That's <laughs> I would very wait. Right. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, as much as you said lapatinib was a poor HER2 inhibitor, I, I think this is a better HER2 inhibitor much better, and um, we had, I was PI on a trial with this drug and TRAS, and although um, Hal Burstein had a single agent neurotinib study and heavily pretreated metastatic HER2 positive, our diarrhea rate was actually a little bit lower than what he saw. I don't think that that means much, but what I think will be interesting is to see how people will utilize this also if it's approved in the metastatic setting, assuming you can get some coverage for it, because I actually think it's a very potent HER2 inhibitor, um, and I would feel completely comfortable combining it with TRAS in the metastatic setting, very similar to the way we combine lapatinib right now.